I remember my first cup of coffee being uh, with my grandmother. Actually, coffee was a big part of our whole family. Everybody drank coffee all day, you know? So I was always curious and fascinated. I'm Darren Daniel with Allegro Coffee, which is based in Thornton, Colorado, and I'm the director of sourcing for our coffee and tea division. I love my job. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, look at this. <laughs> Allegro is one of the first to, to actually buy certified organic coffees. So that's something that's always been a part of who we are. And we um, started a relationship with Whole Foods around 1995. And as we've grown and grown with Whole Foods, it's put me in a great position to be able to travel a lot and see things that a lot of other buyers, a lot of other people don't get to see. Responsible sourcing is actually a, a phrase that we use. You know, we, we, we feel like that's the only way to be buying coffee is to have a sense of where it's from, you know, how it's impacting the communities that are producing it. I mean, Peru, you know, you have this, this ancient history and you have the Incan Empire. I, I never get exhausted with coming here and just seeing the depth. Peru is a country where you will spend 10 or 12 hours to get somewhere because everything is so spread out. It's not easy at all. Badly managed roads and, or sometimes no roads. You're going to the most remote areas uh, of, of that country to uh, hopefully, you know, discover something new, hopefully find something that um, you didn't find the last time. Darren Daniel. The depth of what we're doing here is not just showing up and doing the quick visit. Depth in terms of being able to actually know exactly the farmer that is producing the coffee that has, you know, an acre, maybe half an acre on his, on his land. You know, there's a, a phrase called terroir, which is soil, climate, air, sun. It's commonly used in coffee, and uh, where coffee grows uh, around the world based on soil types and volcanic soils and altitude and the types of varieties that, are, that do well in those particular ecosystems um, very much reflect the flavor that comes out in them. Part of our job is to identify uh, not only flavors from countries, but flavors from regions and maybe even flavors from like, you know, the next hillside. A different variety. So you can see a Castillo. Coffee is something that is just so universal and so everywhere, but people don't realize how much it, it takes to get into the marketplace. From the moment that you plant a seed in the ground, it takes four years to actually get maturation and to get enough fruit off that tree to really be in production. So it, it's not an annual plant where, you know, you grow it and three months later you have harvest. It, it takes a lot of time and care. Farmers are very proud of what they do, and yet it's true that most coffee farmers don't taste their own coffee. All of their better quality coffees are exported to other countries, so there's a big disconnect. People that actually are farmers and, and are working here in the co-op, they're just starting to learn what their coffee tastes like, and, and that's to me that's really exciting. You kind of start asking different questions. I want to know how you create your soils, and I want to know, you know, how you feed your plants, and how do you take care of your family? Are you able to take care of your family? What are your struggles? So those are things that are kind of hard to ask sometimes. There's the romance of travel, and then there's, you know, kind of the beat down that, that occurs after, you know, trips where things don't go the way you want them to go. But I can't imagine what my life would be like without those experiences. It's definitely filled a lot of, um, a lot of cups up for me. You see 
and feel all that that experience in that cup. You know, it, it's it, I know it sounds kind of silly, but somehow that cup symbolizes that, and that that flavor and that experience kind of plays out through the experience of having it finally make its way halfway around the world. It's exotic, yet people don't think it's exotic at all. And I think that's one of our biggest missions is to like put the story back in coffee and get people, you know, kind of hardwired back into why it's special and why it's unique. And that's why we talk about specialty coffee. We're trying to distinguish ourselves from what's known as kind of brown solution. It's something that you grew up with that was in a can and it was ground. You never saw a bean, you know, you, you just weren't connected to it. And if we could do anything to really change that, it would be getting customers to understand how much people put into it.